Hello, uh, welcome to my latest video. Um, I've got myself another rifle, so I thought I'd better show it to you guys and talk to you about it a bit. Um, you've probably worked out from my other videos that I'm, as well as I like to shot like right old rifles and shooting, I like to look at the history and everything on them. Now, what I have here is a Remington Model 12. Now, uh, I picked this up at the local gun shop uh, recently. Uh, for $150. Uh, when this guy showed it to me, it was basically every metal surface was covered with just a coating of brown and red rust. And the stock was cracked, and the stock was actually a bit crooked, and it looked pretty sad. Um, and he said, oh, you know, you have 150 bucks. And when I looked at it, you know, the action, I could tell it was tired, it didn't seem to be loose and worn or anything. So I thought it was worth a go. Picked it up, brought it home. Uh, I should have actually taken a photo or some footage of it before I um, cleaned it, but, um, but I was too keen to clean it, of course. So I got into it with some uh, uh, 4 steel wool and some uh, gun oil. Uh, and you can see in places there's no bluing left. Uh, but got all the, um, all the uh, rust off. Um, but the, the positives about this rifle, as apart from what I just said, it's very tight, actually nice and tight. Four ends in good condition, there's no cracks, common with because of just the nature of that thin walled piece of timber there. No cracks in the fore end. Uh, the other thing to look for when you're buying any um, tubular magazine rifle is that the magazine tube is good and functional, as you can see, it's in nice condition, the catch works. Um, sometimes some rifles you can get to repros from, but some you can't. So. Uh, so there you go. Um, now, uh, back in the early 20th century, that, and I'm not sure if I said, these rifles were made from 1909 to 1934. Um, they're a takedown design, which I'll show you in a minute. There's the takedown screw. Now, just about every one of the major um, firearms manufacturers in the early 20th century um, had a pump action 22. Um, I think Winchester, the John Browning designed Winchester uh, 1890 uh, and 1906 um, were the first ones, they were very successful, they had an open top though, um, but they sold a lot of those, they were a takedown design. Later on Winchester um, brought out another one similar, more similar to this with a close in action called the Model 61. And that was made for many years, right from I think the 30s right up until the uh, maybe even 70s or 80s, I think. Um, Savage had the Model 29, a very sought after rifle, and our guy's got one of those, shoots really well. Uh, I've got a little list here I'm reading from. BSA had one, didn't really have a model number, but it was brought out, it was patented in 1923. Uh, Marlin had their number 20, never seen one of those, they mustn't be so popular. Uh, and then of course there was the FN Browning, John Browning designed trombone they called it. Again, I think that was from the 1920s. All sort of similar. Uh, one thing that makes differs this from a lot of the other um, of its contemporary pump action rifles at the time is the way that this works. If you look at this, when I rack it, see how the whole magazine moves. That's unusual. Most of the magazine is fixed, and the and the um, the forehead moves around the magazine. Um, now, this one was designed, if you're interested, um, by a guy called John Peterson, uh, when Remington decided that they needed a pump action to compete with the other makers. They got John Peterson to design it for them. He was a not quite as prolific as John Browning, but he was a prolific firearms designer in the early 20th century. Um, you may have heard him uh, of him. He designed something called the Peterson device, which was a um, a semi-automatic conversion system for the 1903 Springfield. Uh, and then, when the U.S. government were looking at changing to a rimless um, front-locking military body military rifle, he designed a cartridge called the 276 Peterson and a rifle to fire it. Uh, and they had trials with the US military, but unfortunately World War One came uh, and they decided not to, not to go ahead with it. But, uh, but anyway, it's interesting to have. I've got a few John Browning designed guns, but it's, 
it's nice to have one designed by John Peterson, the other big designer. Right, um, so as I said, it's a uh, takedown design. Now, um, one thing, it's got, a, uh, it's got a safety catch behind the trigger guard there. Um, one thing that, um, uh, to take note of, if you're getting one of these, I've got one, I'm not sure about it, is um, the, uh, lap, the latch system. Most pump actions will have some sort of locking system because if you're carrying them with a cartridge in the chamber, you know, holding onto the fore end as you're walking along and then you go down the hill, the weight of the gun can tend to open the action and spit your cartridge out. Uh, so most pump action guns will have some sort of locking system so that when the gun is cocked, you need to push some sort of button in order to be able to rack it. Um, and um, once it's fired though, you don't need to. Of course, you can just fire it and, uh, and, uh, and then rack it again. So um, just here in front of the trigger guard, you can see we've, we've got a lock. It's actually, it's a, it's a lock to, to lock the forend. Uh, it also acts as a cocking indicator because um, when the gun's cocked, you can actually feel it's kind of poking out in that little hole. Um, when the gun's not cocked, uh, I'm not going to dry fire it, but I'll show you later on. When the gun's not cocked, um, then you can tell that it's not cocked by the fact that that thing's not sticking out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the camera on a, a tripod and I'm going to show you how to um, partially dismantle the gun for cleaning, just for routine maintenance. Um, it's quite, it's a bit tricky. There's a trick to it, and it took me a while to learn. Thank God for YouTube. Um, but um, it's pretty easy actually once you know how to do it. So I'll show you how to do that. All right. So here's a close up of the. Uh action receiver. Um, here's the takedown screw. Now um, you'll note this fore end screw. See how it's got a screw and then it's got a little retaining uh, screw that goes into a, a notch in the outside screw. Um, that was a later modification. That shows this rifle was as late one in the later production years. I'm not sure exactly when it changed. I think sometime in the 20s. Obviously, just with the racking back and forth, people are losing their losing their screws. Um, you know, this one thing with this rifle is someone's actually lost this one and replaced it with some dodgy-looking screw. But these screws are actually available. You can get repros of them um, through Guns Parts Corporation. So I am intending to replace that screw. A um, few other things to look at. Um, now you'll notice. Um, In the breech block here, see the extractor there's got a couple little holes. It almost looks like something's missing from there, but um, and they're quite roughly drilled holes. I've seen pictures on the net where instead of having two holes that are together, there's two separate holes that are apart. Um, so they look almost look like they're hand drilled. But from what I can gather, they must just be to um, to vent escaping gases in the case of a split um, split case. Um, can't see any other reason for it. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that because it is a strange looking little thing that they've got, but they've all got it. So because when I first thought it, I thought someone might have been mucking around with it, you know, drilling holes or something. Right, now I'm going to show you now how to um, dismantle this rifle and just show you the inside of it. Now, there is a video on, on YouTube where a guy said, shows you how to dismantle the rifle and he starts by taking the whole fore end apart. It's completely not necessary. You know, you'd only do that if you want to repair something, because there's a lot of fine threads and stuff here. You wouldn't want to, You don't want to be pulling it apart any more than you need to. Um, but anyway, so what we'll do first is we'll we'll just zoom out a bit. There we go. So we'll just undo. Uh, you can use a nickel or a five cent piece, depending on where you are. If that's a bit tight, that thing. Most of these. Uh, 22s from this era take down. They're usually designed for a specific coin. I haven't tried a coin in this one, but I know my um, my no 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 four Winchester single shot. Um, it doesn't. It does. You can use a five cent piece, but it's a bit sort of big and big for the diameter of the curve. But um, I actually managed to get a um, 1905 nickel to go with a rifle. A friend in the US sent it to me, and it fits perfectly in the slot. So. Um, so I'd imagine you'll probably find there'll be a, a US coin will probably fit that slot well as well. 
so just wiggle it and it comes apart now I'll just show you this first this is worth looking at so unlike some of the other rifles like the Winchester's 1800 and 906 they had an external hammer um, but this was sort of the first um, closed in breech internal hammer pump action design now you will see this just like a like a, a handgun you can actually uncock this um, by pushing the trigger so it's not a bad idea if you clean it when you get back from shooting give it a good clean um, is then just decock it before you put it back together again so that your you know your, your uh, mainspring's not compressed um, but you'll also notice interestingly that um, see how the um, see if we can get that to focus we'll see if we zoom in a bit um, see how that sort of there's nothing sticking out there now if I cock this and it's now it's now sticking out and it's acting like it's spring loaded it's acting like the as I mentioned earlier the catch um, catch on it so um, I'll decock that again so there you can see it's pretty simple and if there's anything broken there it's quite uh, there is there's quite a few videos on YouTube of people um, dismantling these rifles just knocking pins out and things so um, if there's anything that needs fixing broken springs or weak springs or anything in there reasonably easy to to um, dismantle now we'll come to the main receiver now this is the most important part what I'm going to show you now so pay attention um, if, any rifle you should be trying to um, clean it from the breech to avoid wearing the muzzle with your cleaning rod. Uh, these are really easy to clean from the breech but there's a, there's a trick to uh, dismantling them to be able to do that. So I'm going to show it to you now. Alright so if you put the rifle on its back like that there we go so you can see the breech block in here this is sort of the carrier carrier sort of thing but the breech blocks there the breech blocks sort of locked by the carrier if you see that see the whole thing moves together now if we come back here see this little button here that's actually the takedown button it's a spring loaded button push it down so that you can push the wooden fore and hard up against the, uh, the front of the receiver right put your finger on the breech block just push it down, you don't really have to grab it, but push it down and then see that? See I'm pushing it into the into its notch in the roof of the receiver which lets it go low enough so that the hook unhooks from the from the, um, the carrier there and then we can take it out so there we go now you might notice there's actually no firing pin in this um, because when I bought one thing, problem with this rifle is it had a broken firing pin I'm just about to actually I've got a new firing pin which I'm going to fit shortly and I'm going to make a separate video on that so if you happen to have one of these with a broken firing pin um, you can watch that one but anyway normally the firing pins in here but you know this is such a good design you know you can get it out you can give it a spray with some you know solvent and give it a good old clean with a toothbrush and get all you know anyone who's shot a 22 knows that they can get pretty pretty grotty um, the front front of the, the breech block but you should be able to get that nice and clean you know oil it up again uh, by the same means um, if we look at this I won't, I won't move the camera but you can actually see down the bore see straight down the bore here um, so you can get in there with a brush clean all the all the dirt from from in the receiver around the breech face um, and then um, you can put your rod in from the back and you can clean the ball from the back give it a bit of an oil and everything alright so um, once it's cleaned this is the next tricky bit now this is really tricky well it was really tricky until I learned the trick so because um, if, if so, doesn't, someone doesn't show you how to do this properly you'll never work it out by yourself alright so get your breech ball slide it in and you'll find it will fall into a notch see that see how that fell in it fell into its little notch now that's that's kind of uh, a special notch it's got two notches one uh, one that it locks up into when it's about to fire and this one we're taking it down do the same thing as you did before go back gently push your push your takedown button push that all the way back to so that the wood is touching the receiver now 
support the front of the rifle, all you do, put your finger on the back of that block and gently push it forward. There we go, it didn't look like much did it, but now it's there and it's all ready to go. So um, so that's how you um, dismantle your uh, Remington Model 4 for cleaning. Alright, so there we got the uh, uncocked action. Now you'll notice there's a little there's a little knot, a little kind of protuberance on the front of the uh, sort of trigger guard. Slide that in and that just slides into a slot just there like that. That goes there. Now you might find that you might it's actually under slight spring tension I think because of the hammer there. So you might find to get your little screw to go in so um, you'll see there's slight spring tension when you push that. Now what you need to do is you need to just push that right in hard against there so that then the holes line up and you can theoretically um, and you can put your screw in which is been difficult about. Um, these screws were generally in most of these rifles they were captive. Uh, this one comes out and I suspect it's probably something broken or worn on it to allow it to come out. They're generally designed so that you can't lose, you know, obviously out in the field you can't lose the screw. Um, Alright, so there it is back together. Uncocked, I can tell it's uncocked because that bit's down there. Um, so, um, yeah, so I've got to, as I just mentioned before, I've got to put a new firing pin in this, which I'm about to do right now. Um, this stock has pretty had it. Uh, when I uh, when I got it, it looked like somebody hit a sheep over the head or something with it. It actually it actually went down an angle like this, and I uh, I undid the stock screw, and it looks like it's split. Someone's filled it up with wood filler here, so it's pretty knack. But there's a few places in the U.S. that actually um, uh, make stock blanks for these, and it should fit. It's a very simple fitment here, actually. Just the just the stock bolt goes up here. Um, there's just that little bit of inletting for the bottom trigger guard, but otherwise it's just just flat within with a um, with a uh, just a little bit lip that goes in underneath that, and a couple of little there's a couple of little lo locating pegs which locate with uh, um, with just little holes in the front of the stock. So uh, so if you buy one of these um, these uh, semi-finished stocks, that should be pretty easy to fit.